minutes to the gentleman from Kentucky um, and the co-chair of the Second Amendment Caucus, Thomas Massey. I thank the gentleman from Ohio. Before I talk about the substance of this bill, or the lack thereof, I'd like to put it in the context of the other dozen or so unserious, unconstitutional, unnecessary, and unsafe responses to gun shootings in this country that the Democrats have offered and passed in this chamber. What have they done? Well, they, they passed a law to ban magazines with a capacity of more than 15 rounds, and the chairman of the Rules Committee claimed that this would stop shootings like the one at Virginia Tech. What he failed to mention is the shooter at Virginia Tech never used a magazine that had more than 15 rounds. That's an example of an unserious solution that's come from this body. What else have they done? They've changed the definition of a gun dealer so that any law-abiding individual who sells a firearm to anybody and makes a profit of it now might be a gun dealer and therefore prosecutable in a federal crime. What else have they done that's unserious or unconstitutional? Well, they've passed a law to ban gun trafficking. The problem is that's already uh, illegal. But who did they sweep up in this dragnet, in this new law? Well, they swept up domestic violence victims who might ask a neighbor for a firearm. Now they can be prosecuted not the neighbor who gives, not the Good Samaritan, not just the Good Samaritan, but also the domestic violence victim can be prosecuted as a gun trafficker under a bill that they passed here. Recognizing this flaw, I offered an amendment to fix it in the Judiciary Committee. Every Democrat but one, one of them had a little bit of common sense, voted against that amendment to fix their own bill. What else have they done? Well, they passed a bill that I'm going to call unconstitutional on arrival. It's already been ruled unconstitutional if you read the D.C. versus Heller decision. The, the Supreme Court justices said, you can't force Mr. Dick Heller to keep his gun un, uh, uh, unloaded and disassembled in his house because that violates the Second Amendment. But that's exactly what one of their laws that came through this chamber in just the past couple months does. It's called the so-called Safe Storage Act. It's already unconstitutional. But who likes this bill more than anybody? Home invaders. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great to know that by federal law, everybody who's got a firearm now has to have it locked up and unattainable, unaccessible in the amount of time that would it take to respond to a home invader. What else have they done? A red flag bill that deprives citizens of their due process and endangers police officers police officers who are going to be required to respond in pre-dawn raids of people who haven't had due process, have had, never had their day in court, haven't even re reached a, a level of evidence that's sufficient. Uh, the red flag bill is bad. What else have they done? They passed a bill to deprive 18, 19, and 20-year-olds from purchasing semi-automatic rifles and semi-automatic shotguns. Now, they're already deprived of their constitutional right to buy a handgun, but now we're just going to sweep in all of these things. But are they going to then raise the draft age to 21? Now that we're saying, you, we, Uncle Sam will give you a gun. Uncle Sam can conscript you to the military, send you overseas to fight for a constitution that doesn't even protect you or your wife who is at home taking care of the kids if you're 18, 19, or 20 years old. They don't care. They don't care. This one is also unconstitutional on arrival. The Ninth Circuit, one of the most liberal circuits in the country, has already ruled that. And why is this so disturbing? We heard earlier today from one of my colleagues in this debate that she wants to ban assault weapons. Well, the House Democrat Twitter account tweeted that all semi-automatic rifles are weapons of war. Really? There are a lot of people in Kentucky who own Remington 750 deer rifles who are going to be shocked to find out that they purchased a weapon of war. If you saw one of these, I think you would all agree this is not a weapon of war, but it's an alarm to every American who's out there watching this debate that they are coming after your guns. Now let's get to the substance of this bill or the lack thereof. Why are we here? Debating this bill, this is the second time we voted on it, the second time we debated it. Why are we here again? Because they tried to suspend the rules of this body and get it through without following the rules of this House. And they failed. So that's why we're here again, to give it the debate it deserves. So the bill is called 
the Active Shooter Alert, Alert Act of 2022. In the Democrat cities where they've defunded the police, I think you should call it the Your Own, Your Own Act of 2022. Yeah, that's right. We're going to tell you. This has expired. Yield the gentleman an additional minute. Thank you. Gentleman is recognized for an additional minute. They're going to tell you you're on your own. But can you turn this thing off in Chicago? How will you get any sleep? If they, because you got a shooting literally every night in Chicago. If they were serious about stopping crime or helping individuals, this would be called the Active Violence Alert Act. What about violence committed with the car? Violence committed with the knife? No concern for that, because the true purpose of this bill passing here today is to scare people. It's to scare people on their phones. They can't get away from their phones. It's going to be popping up saying, be afraid somebody's got a gun. And they are going to try and condition the American public to ask to repeal the Second Amendment, either explicitly or implicitly here in this chamber. And I urge opposition to this bill, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Well done. We reserve. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman. Well